This is CNN. Welcome back. In the crossfire tonight, Elise Hogue and Lila Rose. Today, for the 41st year in a row, abortion remains constitutional, a fact that continues to frustrate the right wing. But here's what frustrates me. Conservatives always say they want fewer abortions. Progressives agree. We can all agree on that. So there's a whole laundry list of things that we know reduce the need for abortions in America. Let's start with sex education and contraception. And what about raising the minimum wage? Among other things, that would allow women to afford to raise children. So if conservatives really want to reduce the number of abortions in America, why are they opposing these policies that should be at the top of their agenda? You know, uh, one of the things I love about liberalism is that... <laughs> I'm glad there's something. <laughs> whatever, whatever is happening, you reach out to one of the five or six things. I'm, I'm surprised you didn't throw in, you know, global warming. I mean, there'd be five or six other things we could work on, all of which would help. And I just love that. It was, it was very nicely done. Uh, and weird. Uh, uh, <laughs> but he didn't argue, so he must I, think I'm right. I, I'd like to say something. Lila, please. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's been really fascinating to me and insulting, actually, to see all of this political discussion about women reduced to birth control. And not just birth, any birth control, but mostly hormone drugs, synthetic hormones that are pumping women's bodies. There's the Yaz lawsuit happening right now, one of the most famous birth control pills of the last few years, Bayer Corporation. That's now 10,000 women have said how, how it's hurt them. There's even Vanity Fair exposing the Nuva Ring, which was promoted by Planned Parenthood. No one's talking about the risk to women of these drugs even the world health organization called them a group one carcinogen i mean that's the that's the kind of thing that women deserve to know right up there with the dangers of abortion and it's not being talked about instead we're being told just take this pill it'll it'll reduce your fertility and then you can be sexually available do whatever and and that'll solve your problems i don't think that's a good solution for women i think it's really interesting i'm with you sally shockingly right <laughs> um that I hear from Lila and people like Lila that their ultimate intent is to actually decrease the number of abortions and yet we're blocking all of the things that we know actually do allow women to make informed choices on the front end and prevent unintended pregnancies. The countries that actually have the most access to comprehensive sex education, contraception, putting that information and knowledge and control in the hands of women um, actually have the lowest abortion rates. And we also know that 99% of American women at some time in their life use some form of contraception. That's why we're trying to get it better and better all the time. And contraception has changed just like every other pharmaceutical in this country that has both helped our health but also had risk is changing for the better. So it is a, a woman's choice to be able to do that. But people like Lila actually block that because their view is that there is only one way to be a woman in this society and they would like to use legislation to impose that morality on I the think that us. legislation the role of law is to protect human rights and so when we're talking about that aspect when we're talking about life in the womb we have to recognize that those are people too and they have rights too I mean we can't well, maybe see them justify... or they can't come and talk to us at this table but they're victims by the thousands each day so we need to recognize their human rights the question of what's empowering to women that's a discussion we can have. I'd but, like to ask a question. But it's actually, never empowering Lila, to a woman to kill a child. One thing that we know, one thing that we know, and this is where I see the split and I'd like between to hear an people. To that, this that's is an important where we question. see the split between people who do say, I personally believe abortion is immoral and I would not do it, but I don't want to impose that on anyone else and I believe it should be legal. The reason, one reason for that is because we know and it's proven all over the world that when abortion is illegal the number of abortions don't go down but the number of women dying go up and what you are saying is that women's rights don't matter women's health doesn't matter women's mortality doesn't matter it has no place in this conversation and i find that to be very far outside of the mainstream of most people's experience at least first of all the founder of your own organization nero bernard nathanson said that the numbers that were that the, a lot of the pro-abortion advocates at the time of Roe came up with about all these back alley abortions were hugely out of the water exaggerated and he even said we lied he straight up said we fabricated numbers so I think we first have to address this idea that 
hundreds of thousands of women just want to always have abortions no matter what. No, it's legal, it's paid for by the government, and we're being told by society that this is our but the solution to our problems. But all study after study shows Ireland, that Ireland, no abortion, when the number some of the lowest maternal mortality rates in the world, lower than the United States, Ireland and they have no abortion. Ireland a terrible tragedy that created enormous riots let me, let, in the let streets. Me ask you, let me and ask abortion you a wouldn't have solved that problem. Let me ask you a question, because um, you, you keep talking about the right to choose. But the fact is that the left is so committed to its worldview that the Obama administration currently is in the middle of a lawsuit with a group that you could hardly imagine. This, this is, you couldn't make this up. But just take a picture. You know, the, the, the fact is that the little sisters of the poor are currently in a fight with the federal government over eliminating their religious liberty as they define it. No, no. So, so you've been. Can, no, just wait a second. You, you've been aggressively here mm -hmm. saying, "Oh, we have every, we have religious liberty. We have the right to think about." It. These folks have said flatly, requiring them to do what the Obama administration wants is a direct violation of their beliefs, mm -hmm. and they simply want the government to let them alone. And the, they're, they're the little too. sisters of the poor do amazing work. I think everybody around this table agrees with that, and in fact. What they need to do is sign a form that Why? affirms their Why? opposition to contraception. Why? Affirms their opposition to contraception. And let me tell you what happens after that. None of their employees no. get contraception. And then they, they can go back to doing their work. What that's this. not true for, what that's not true for, is the tens of thousands of employees of Hobby I Lobby I and the stay, dozens well, of I want to stay in this case because it is central to the future of the United States. This is a religious organization. Engaging and helping poor people who are both Catholic Nobody's and Nobody's arguing Catholic. that, absolutely. Okay, and what they have said clearly is they aren't going to sign this form because their interpretation of it is a violation of their religious beliefs. Now, why does the government have to be totalitarian and say, oh, no, not even, not even a group of nuns can, 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 can do this. We are going to impose on everyone what we want, and we're going to interpret for you what you're allowed to believe. Have you and, seen and the form? The form literally says we are a religious form? affiliated organization who is a lie. oppose the form contraception. Is a lie. Oh, can no, we can we add, we, should, we need to add two important what? things to this debate. First of all, the fact that the the contraception contraceptive mandate is not just about birth control. It's also about abortifacient drugs like Plan B that can kill a child in the earliest in the early trimester. The second thing is I still haven't heard a response about so, the Yaz drug or about NuvaRing and about how it's wrecking so women's what? bodies by putting synthetic hormones in them that men, by the way, don't want to take. Right? There's no synthetic hormone drug for men for birth control. Women are the ones pumping our bodies with fake progestins, all of these things. What, what about that? Do you think that that's good for women? I think that that, I want, I'd like to hear it, you know, an answer to that one. <laughs> because that's a big promotion. Some Birth of these actions the are jumping the shark to, you know, I don't think we're going to get into a medical debate about various contraceptive options. What is interesting to me, and I think you know this, Newt, is that the Little Sisters case, they just have to sign the form. No. End of story. Nobody's this getting, is, this is about trying to unravel the contraceptive mandate, and this is about what I don't understand is if we want to prevent abortions, why is the if, right if, simultaneously if, going sorry. after access to contraception? If, why? If, I mean, I'm not, you don't have to use it. I still haven't it's heard how, how the government, which is forcing groups like Little Sisters, like to pro lifers, what? women, to, 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 to pay for drugs no, that are not killing human lives, indirectly, directly, how do no, you want to say it, that are going to kill human lives. None of the Little life. Sisters are drugs that are damaging to a woman's body that the World Health Organization calls that. Wait, so let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. So, my dad's on blood pressure drugs. It actually has side effects. It also gives him a better quality of life. He's chosen that. He knows the side effects. We know the side effects of birth control. Why can't we make, make yeah. that same choice? And what Are you suggesting that insurance shouldn't cover blood pressure? Drugs because it has side effects or I'm, I'm suggesting that preventative. I'm suggesting that our fertility is not a sickness that we need to medicate and, and that causes all these side effects, strokes, deaths. That's why 10,000 women. I'm on Facebook. I'm in I'm in the class of a 25 year old woman. So I'm seeing ads regularly. Join the Yaz lawsuit. To, to fight against this, the ph Bayer Pharmaceutical Company for what they've done to women all over America. Why don't we know, know more about the risks as women? I, I, I think this is a great point. Look, World I don't Health Organization. I don't hear the mayor out. World Ho Health Organization. I haven't heard of Hope Valley. Valley. Study around the world. This is important. No, this is important. Maybe news. Stay here. <laughs> Next, the final question for both of our guests. We also want you at home to weigh in on today's fireback question. 
does a candidate's position on abortion impact your vote? Tweet yes or no using hashtag Crossfire. We'll have the results after the break.